So we're gonna be looking today at the Tudor part of the house. So you can see, look at the ceiling. You've had a snippet of this beforehand. Okay, I have an issue with doors. Hold on, everybody. Okay. This is one of the only ceilings like this. That's what makes this so special. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another episode um, behind the scenes at Mapperton. But really today, what I wanted to give you was a lot of you have asked for a tour of just some of the rooms of the house. So we're going to be looking today at the Tudor part of the house. So Mapperton itself was built in the 1500s, so the 16th century, the 17th century, and the 18th century. And we're going to look at the, the bit that was actually built first. So this is the um, hall. So this is the hall. We'll, we'll do another episode on that um, as well. So we're going to come around. I think that this might be locked. Yeah, so we'll come around to the other way. It's a beautiful light out today. You guys have seen the staircase hall before. So now we're gonna head just into the drawing room. So I wanna show you the part of the house that really is Tudor. Now, you've had a snippet of this beforehand. Okay, I have an issue with doors, clearly. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Okay, <laughs> it's these keys. <sighs> okay, so we're, we're coming in here, and again, this is the original Tudor part of the house, and we're gonna go upstairs as well um, to look at it. And I'm still learning a lot about, obviously, um, the Tudor period. Uh, but for me, when I first moved over to England, people would talk about, oh, this is a Tudor room, or this is a Tudor ceiling, or this is a Tudor piece of furniture. And I'm like, what does that mean? So you may know, but I'm gonna tell you, I did not know when I first moved here. Tudor and really from there on out, it was named after really the period of when uh, the Tudor kings were reigning. So in particular, the most famous Tudor king was obviously Henry VIII. And, but the Tudor period was really Henry VI, Henry VII, and Henry VIII. And their, their last name, their surname was Tudor. So he was Henry Tudor. And so that architectural design and style um, really was named after that period. And then you can, when you kind of go through uh, Britain, people say, oh, that's an Elizabethan house. That was the period of Elizabeth I, which was King Henry VIII's um, daughter, who then uh, eventually became queen later. So, and then from there, you moved into uh, the Georgian period, and you can look at even uh, the Jacobean period. We can go through all those periods later. But for now, we're in the Tudor period, which basically means it's, it's the 16th century. So 1500s, and that's when this part of the house was built. And one of the ways that you can really define uh, the Tudor part of this house is actually by the ceilings. So looking at the ceilings, and we're gonna go look at one, a magnificent one upstairs. So this is, again, uh, built, they think about 1540, 1550, and this is a fleur de lis uh, ceiling here. So really extravagant ceiling. And remember, even, uh, you know, in that period, the Tudor period, the Elizabethan period, when he moved to the Jacobean period, which is when Charles I and II were uh, in reign, and then, of course, the Georgian period, it was all about design and and the architecture. And the reason is, is it was to show off your status and your power. So when we look at different Tudor right now, we'll, we'll obviously, because we're, we're talking about the Tudor period, when we look at uh, Tudor homes, you can look at the extravagant ceilings, the extravagant, uh, extravagance that they put in to these buildings that were, that were built. Um, so this is, uh, again, when we have visitors come in. Right now, uh, we don't um, uh, because of the, the crisis that we're all in right now, but uh, the pandemic. But the, the, you know, this is one of the main features, obviously, of this room is the ceiling. And actually, I'm going to turn on the light, Stephen, just so we get a little bit more light in here. There we go. Ah, much better. And we've, again, I touched on this a little bit um, with you guys before. Um, 
in uh, a couple of the episodes. So I, I really do want to head up to the Great Chamber and show you that. But just some things just to clock in here is obviously here is the fourth Earl of Sandwich. So that is John uh, Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, who uh, you can see here, it says John Earl of Sandwich. Um, right there. He is the one who invented the famous uh, snack as we know it today, the sandwich, or at least it was named after him. And then this was part of his uh, collection of, of platters, basically, of platters and dishes to serve. And you can see this is the Montague crest here. So we know anytime you see three lozenges here, these lozenges, you know that it's a Montague. Uh, there's different uh, uh, branches of Montagues that will have different crests. But this is the Montague crest here. And in Latin, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it, but what this means is after so many shipwrecks, the harbor, because the first Earl who was given the title, the Earl of Sandwich, Edward Montague, was um, head, of the, um, ad, uh, head of the Admiral, Admiralty, is that right, Stephen? At, yeah, head, I, it's like a mouthful. Um, so head of the Navy. And he then, of course, uh, they, when, he was knight, when he was given the peerage, the first Earl of Sandwich, by King Edward II for bringing him back um, from exile, they obviously came up with their sort of family motto. And our family motto is, after so many shipwrecks, the harbor. I try to incorporate that a little bit more into like my yoga teachings um, and into life lessons. So that's the uh, fourth Earl. And this is about 17, mid 1700s, I suspect when this was painted, mid 1700s. Um, and I think from here, the most important thing, and then I'm gonna show you the door as well, which I, I know you've seen the door, but it's always nice looking at it again, is obviously the Tudor ceiling, but I wanna head upstairs. But we just can't forget, again, um, this Tudor door. So we looked at this before in when we were looking at the Staircase Hall. But again, since we're talking about the Tudor times, it's always nice to look at the door again. I mean, it, it, I mean, you know, it's just, it's fantastic. It's absolutely stunning, especially with the old vintage Christmas decorations there. So I will obviously do even do more episodes on in here when I talk more about uh, the furniture of the house. But again, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, let me just make sure that's, okay, sorry. That's like George Montague there, the sixth Earl. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn the lights off, Stephen, and then we're gonna head up the staircase hall. Okay, so I wanna then take you up to the great chamber. And the great, ch and the great chamber, I could spend so much time in there. That's why we spent a little bit of time in there just to show you the Tudor ceiling. But just above the drawing room right there is of course the great chamber. Now, the great chamber right now is a bedroom, but in its, what it was originally created for was for the Lord of the house to have his, um, a private place for him to retreat to. So this was almost like a, a sitting room, if you like, for the Lord of the house. And that's why it was called the Great Chamber. So you can see, look at the ceiling. And again, Tudor ceiling, Great Chamber. This was created for the Lord of the house. And this is where he would relax. Um, of course, people would come in here as well, but he could retreat to this area. It was like his sitting room. So this is a pendulum ceiling, and it's uh, plaster, and then uh, underneath, or I guess underneath, behind, if you like, the the plaster work is uh, is wood, and but it's it's again absolutely magnificent. And what's interesting about the pendulum ceiling is that there is the exact same, pretty much the exact same ceiling. Um, of course, from the Tudor period at Hampton Court Palace. So this is one of the only ceilings like this, apart from Hampton Court Palace, in all of um, England. There aren't very many of these. That's what makes this room so special is, of course, this pendulum ceiling. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. And you can see all of the work um, around uh, the original Tudor fireplace here, so original Tudor fireplace. And I, I had no idea when I moved here, because I obviously knew this room always is the great chamber, and you would think, oh, well, there's a bed in there, right? 
and we have put a bed in there, but this was originally absolutely not a bedroom. So again, and it was really during that period um, that they would have these great chambers um, for the Lord of the house. They, they don't exist now. You wouldn't find anybody who had a great chamber and it probably wasn't a bedroom, um, but we've kept its name. So in this room, it has absolutely spectacular views and it's a beautiful day today. So again, original Tudor uh, windows right here down to the uh, 15 acre Italianette gardens. So remember those gardens though were built in the 1920s. So a hundred years old now the gardens are, but again, this room dates back to 1540s, 1550s. A lot of you have also asked about Mapperton itself. Uh, is it the original Montague house? And sadly it's not. So one of the things I, and, and Stephen and I are definitely gonna go visit and show you Hinchingbrook, um, but this is Hinchingbrook. So a lot of you know that my, my title name is Viscountess Hinchingbrook, and these come from about uh, the 1700s. So they were, these were, I think, about 1730s, if I'm correct. So this is the view from the south, Hinchingbrook. And so when the first Earl of Sandwich was given the peerage, Sandwich, the Earl of Sandwich, you would always then uh, give a, a peerage or a title to your firstborn son. And back then in the 1600s, when the first Earl was given his title, uh, you would, a lot of times, um, you would name your firstborn son after your very grand house. So you would give the title of your house, if that makes sense. So he, the Hinchingbrook House it doesn't look like a house. I know it looks more like a castle, but it was called Hinchingbrook House, was bought by Edward Montagu, the first Earl of Sandwich. He bought it from the Cromwell family. And it was such an extraordinary house. So when he uh, gave his firstborn son the, the um, or was given that peerage, Earl of Sandwich, then his firstborn son was given, of course, Viscount, which is my husband. And he used the name Hinchingbrook because the home was you know, it, it represented status and power. So it was uh, Viscount and Viscountess Hinchingbrook. And so you can see different things here. Um, again, this, these uh, gates still exist. I've walked underneath this gate. So this is a view of the lodge, the gateway though, actually. So this is the gateway here. And this is just another view. I'm gonna get out of the way for Stephen, a view of, um, again, that gateway there. So these are really important pieces, and obviously we have more up-to-date photos and, and paintings of Hinchingbrook. But the other thing to note is with Hinchingbrook House, it was sold in the 1950s. What happened in this country is after, really after both world wars, but in particular after the Second World War, over 1,000 historic homes in this country were either left to ruin or destroyed because the the um, the homeowner could no longer keep them up. The expense was so great. That's when taxation really came in and you were taxed the death duties after the Second World War. And the same thing happened to my husband's family. They couldn't keep up the repair, the maintenance, the renovation. These homes are massive. So I believe Hinchingbrook had I think 36 bedrooms. So here again is another view of the hall um, and offices in the court. So that's Hinchingbrook there. And this is a view from the east. It was just like so many other homes in this country, beautiful historic homes. The homeowners could not keep up uh, the maintenance, the repairs, and the renovations. And I actually do understand that now, now living in uh, our own historic home uh, because of the taxations. And so they sold or they left them for ruin or some of them literally demolished them. And they did that before uh, before Britain put in, uh, in into laws, into place of listed buildings. So listed buildings, after they saw the, the horrible destruction of these homes, over a thousand were lost, horrible destruction of these homes, the British um, put in laws into effect where they would list uh, different historic buildings across the country, either grade one or grade two listing. So grade one is really considered uh, of extraordinary value. And value doesn't mean money, it means extraordinary historical value. So, um, and grade two is still 
very important, but it's just a little bit less. Um, still very important. But Mapperton, of course, is a grade one building. So had they put that in place, um, uh, many, many uh, earlier on, many homes wouldn't have been bulldozed down or ruined. And again, during the Second World War, the government, uh, many, many homes, um, Hinchingbrook included, uh, were used for Red Cross, they were used for hospitals, they were used for uh, prisoner of war camps, they were used to house a lot of um, uh, important artifacts from the British Museum and from Westminster. Um, so they, the homeowners, and in particular at Hinchingbrook, uh, had to move out. So my uh, father-in-law uh, moved out during the Second World War. Um, his grandmother moved out during the Second World War. And in fact, even during the First World War, they both moved out because they became uh, hospitals uh, and housing even refugees there as well. And what happened was when they came back into their homes, their homes a lot of times were ruined. So even, uh, there's so many stories of British soldiers staying at these historic homes because the homeowners had to move out, the government needed those homes, and they would chop down the um, staircases and use them for firewood in the winters um, because they had run out of firewood. So when the homeowners came back after the first, and in particular the Second World War, their homes were left, a lot of them were left in ruin and they couldn't they didn't have the funds because of taxation to repair them, so they either demolished them or they just literally left them in ruin um, or they had to sell them. And in our case, we had to sell. So that's me talking, talking, talking. Um, this is, again, uh, not necessarily a Tudor bed, but this bed uh, is a 17th century four-poster bed. One of the things, those of you Americans out there, is when I first came to uh, England, I would say, oh, it's a canopy bed. Never say canopy. Ever, ever, ever. It's not a canopy. It's a four-poster bed. It's the one thing I learned. Um, so yeah, so again, we've created a bedroom here. Um, we kept the name The Great Chamber because that's what it is. And um, I'm not gonna get into too much of the furniture. It's French, I can tell you that comes from the sixth Countess of Sandwich, Louisa. Um, and we will get into that. It's uh, early Louis XV, a couple of these pieces here, not that, but a couple of pieces here. But I'll talk more about Louisa, the Countess, sixth Countess of Sandwich and her love of French furniture and um, bringing it back. And I think that, I mean, I could talk forever about it. Um, what we are gonna do is, and I'm really glad I was able to show you guys the Hinchingbrook portraits because uh, we will head to Hinchingbrook. If you're, you probably are asking right now, I didn't say what happened to Hinchingbrook. Luckily, Hinchingbrook is still standing um, and uh, it's now a school. So it's a lovely, wonderful, amazing, amazing school. So, and um, there are still a lot of the Montague collection paintings on loan there. So a lot of the, Hinchingbrook is so enormous as you can see that there's a lot of those life-size um, paintings as you can see when, when we went up the staircase hall like the first Earl and we we don't have the space here so we've um, kept them on loan at the school um, themselves. And what makes Hinchingbrook really special is that everywhere you go at Hinchingbrook are the lozenges, the Montague lozenges, and the cre everywhere, like three red lozenges in pretty much every single room in Hinchingbrook. And, a, and then like in the, when you go into the library, there's stained glass of the Montague crest of basically every single Montague that was born um, from the 1600s. It is absolutely wonderful. So for me, every time I go to Hinchingbrook, I'm like, oh, this is the Montague house. It was the original Montague house and you can just see the crest and you can see the lozenges everywhere. And, and you can see uh, really uh, how, how, much um, during that period, you wanted to kind of show off your, your status and your power, so you would put your crest and um, uh, you would put your crest everywhere. And that's what is really interesting about Hinchingbrook. So we will um, take a trip there. I even planted a tree there. It says Viscountess Hinchingbrook. I planted a tree for Trafalgar Day about, oh dear, 15 years ago, almost 15 years ago. Um, and it's got a plaque there. Uh, it was the first time I ever had to wear a hat. Believe it or not, it was super fun. So that's just a little bit 
about the two different ceilings here um, at the Tudor part that actually when we are open to the public, people do really want to come and see this ceiling because it's a very much one of a kind ceiling. The only other ceiling like this, as I said, is in Hampton Court Palace. So it's really special to see it in a house where actually somebody is living um, like we are. And yeah, I think that's it. That's a wrap for um, this episode. Um, thank you guys. Again, there's so much to show you at Hinching Brook and I wanna show you different bits. I don't wanna just show you the repairs that we have to do all of the time. There's many. But I also wanna show you some of the history and the different types of fleur de lis or pendulum uh, ceilings that were obviously popular during the Tudor period. Um, and again, huge shout out to all my patrons, um, every single one of you, the, the Lord ladies, Viscount, Viscountesses, um, and of course the Earl and Countesses of which we now have five. So we've got thank you to Cheryl, to Sherry, to Taylor, to Angeline, and of course to the newest member, Earl. Um, thank you, Robert, or newest Earl, Robert. Um, thank you guys so much. And yeah, well, I'll be back with a whole bunch more every single week. Bye guys. Here's one of the life ones. There, you see, we can't fit those. Wait, there are two, these, there's a lot of these at Hinchingbrook House. See, it's big. I mean, that is life size.